Hi, Sandy here. Um, I haven't been making very many videos lately. Um, but I need to make some more tags and borders. Um, I love making car themed tags and borders. I make them for holidays and birthdays and I like to have a lot on hand. And then when I make a scrapbook page like this one right here, I just put the photos on where they fit and then I fill in the space with um, a pre-made tag or border. Um, and the automotive ones are really good for men's pages. And This is my brother. He's been living with me for the last 11 years. But um, So this is a border that I had previously made and put that on that page. And then here's a border car theme. Um, let's see what else I can find. Okay, here's, a, here's another car border. I just, I use a strip of paper, scrap papers. Um, I, I end up with a lot of strips and I use up a lot of them. And um, I print these car pictures off of Pinterest, vintage cars and stuff. And then I just throw a bunch of stuff on there, <laughs> using stuff up. So there's another car, car, um, border he happen he likes to go to these um races and stuff so i get pictures of him doing that well he takes brings home the pictures and i put them in my scrapbook um here's a tag an automotive tag it's got a, just a edge of a classic red car um and i put that on a page um so i need some more and I haven't done much scrapbooking in quite a while um, because I haven't had a lot of pictures lately. But my daughter went on a weekend road trip with her boyfriend um, went to see western Nebraska. And I whipped up this scrapbook for her. It took me about three days. And um, they visited a car museum. So there we go I used up most of my borders and tags automotive borders and tags making these the section for their classic cars um, some of them I just whipped up on the spot because I didn't have enough but I, I like to have them pre-made actually so these are my tags and my borders for these the car show pages so that's fun so I was going to make some more and I didn't have much good stuff to make them with. So I went to scrapbooking for less and I've gotten stuff from there before. They didn't have anything for cars. So I printed off um, pages of things like this um, and cut them up. And I, I just used a speck of glue to stick them on these pages. So I can see, I got a whole page of license plates and I cut them all out. Um, this vintage car stuff, um, gas pumps, old ads. So this is the stuff I have and, and I've already, on my table over there, over there, <laughs> I've got like um, eight or nine nine each of tags and borders with a just a start with some things I threw on there and I'm gonna glue them together and I'm gonna add more stuff as a go from these pages so um, I'll be right back okay so I'm gonna start with this one I've got this tag I make a ton of these out of scraps I use cereal boxes and stuff to cut out a base and then I, I cover them with, with scrap scraps. And this, these are a bunch of strips. Um, and I, I've got all these bases to make tags with. So I'm using those. Um, I'm going to need this quarter rounder. I'm going to need glue. I got my thing here. My <laughs> gluing mat. Um, and I'm going to need my hole puncher. Excuse me. So I'm going to round these corners. I probably need to add some more things to this. Now I like to make my tags and borders cluttered and junky. So I always add 
not always, most of the time, I add these little scraps of paper and I save these. I don't like to waste anything and I, I um, and saved all these little scraps and I've got them sorted by color green blue purple you you get it um, I even got a little holiday section with Christmas and fall so I use these uh, I don't like to waste anything and, and they add to my cluttered look so um, this is what I've started out with and I need more stuff I need more stuff on here so let's see Don't need any. Let me, let me put this here where you can see it. Ugh. Don't really need any more cars. Let me get down to the license plates. Let me see now. Here's some good stuff. Let's put a, a sign on there. Well, that's Route 66. Let's add another Route 66 to it. And then we definitely want a, a license plate. Well, we need one from a state with the Route 66. Um, California or... Where, do, where does the... Arizona. Arizona's a good one for the Route 66. I got one from like each state here. I don't know if I got 50, but. Oh, okay. Texas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Ohio, Nevada. I believe Route 66 goes through Nevada. But, and then I got these little words um, adventure. Just want to use stuff up. And then I got this stuff. Okay, I think I'm ready to glue. Uh, my husband is watching a Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs football game. That's his favorite team. So if you hear <laughs> some whooping and who hollering, that's him. I hear him clapping right now. So that's how I do that. I like to put my little, I usually have a subject, that's my subject. I like to put them at an angle for some reason, I don't really know why. So I'm going to put Texaco right here. Route 66 there. A license plate. I like to overlap things. Make it more clunky. This is a sticker. Gotta get this started. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, well, I didn't think much on that. Um, yeah, that'll work right there. I can't have it on this black background because then you won't be able to see it. And then a road sign. And I think that's enough. And the final step is to punch it. And I have a lot of fibers and you know, ribbons and stuff to put through here. But I don't do that often because then it lays on top of the photos on the page. But sometimes I do. Okay, so one done. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, where is it? Oh, this box of stuff. I usually add something 3D to it. What have we got in yellow? I don't want any flowers or anything. Okay. Button is that such. There's a star. And this. Yeah. 
this thing it's kind of like a tail light <laughs> okay so I'm gonna roll out my little cart that I keep under my desk to put this box on keep that handy okay so this is a sticker I like to add a couple of little 3d elements to my stuff this is a sticker and it's not sticky so we need a glue dot That's big ones those are very small hope I have some medium size oh my I don't have any medium glue dots, so I have to make a partial big one work. And they're so sticky, which is why they work so good, right? Yeah, that looks good. I'm trying to put this back on here. Okay. Okay, that one is done. And let's do a border now. So this is what I've come up with. I had a lot of these arrows and I just threw one on each of my tags and borders to use them up. So we'll start with our little scraps. Hang them off the side. I got a raggedy edge. I like to hang that on the side to give it more interest. Okay. And I've got this car. And this big sticker. Um, I'm going to leave part of the backing on because. And I'll tear that off when maybe I won't even tear it off when it's time to put it on the page. Maybe I'll trim it. Yeah, I'm gonna trim that down because I probably that will probably be hanging over a sticker and I don't want that coming I mean, over a photograph. I don't want that um sticking to the photo. And I need to choose some more stuff for this page. So, gas station. Yeah, I need a lot more stuff for this page. This, not this page, this border. So we'll definitely add a license plate. Oh, there's Arizona now that I don't need it. Um, a little fire chief thing. Let's go. And then, oh. Kind of leaning toward the green. Oh, I've got this. It's just a little bit of scrapbook paper. I'll stick that on there. I've got a license plate. Um, kind of going with the green. Sphinx spark plugs. Okay. Then we want something kind of small. Well, that's about all I've got. <laughs> um, I've got two of these. I'm going to try to get that on there. I don't have a plan. I'm <laughs> just putting stuff on. But I will make it work.
getting a little crowded, but that's okay. That's the way I like it. Got that on there crooked. Got to straighten it out. So. Uh, I don't know why I haven't been making any videos. Um, if you saw my recent video about my library, how I moved my books around and all the books that I have. I've been trying to read more books lately. I've been reading a lot. I read, um, I've been reading a lot of um, James Patterson. I'm caught up with most of the other authors that I like. So, But I'm not caught up with James Patterson. And I'm not caught up with... Um, I have a lot of... Um, Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys I've been working on so I've been reading those and then um, I've discovered a new author I like um, um, Janet Ivanovich and she, she's funny she writes funny books um, so I heard about J.D. Robb who is um, she's um actually Nora Roberts and she has a series of, about um, I don't know a detective in the future and it's supposed to be a little comical kind of like kind of like James Janet Ivanovich so I ordered the first book in that series and there's like 43 of those and then then the Nora Roberts series I mean not series but she has like writes like trilogies and standalone books and I printed out a list of her books because when I when I start reading an author I go whole hog and I read everything they write I collect all their books and I read them all so um she has written over 200 books. <laughs> so that should probably keep me busy well into retirement. Um, so when I've, I'm, I've come a long way in reading the, um, the James Patterson books. He's, I think I'm on number 98. Not, not in consecutive order, but... Um, 98 of his books I've read and I've got like 30 more to go <laughs> to be caught up with him but he's written a lot Stephen King and Dean Koontz they've written like 70 to 80 books uh, I've got all of um, Agatha Christie's books there's 96 and that includes her biography and autobiography and just stuff related to her uh, but I'm biting off a whole lot with with uh, Nora Roberts, J.D. Robb. But that's okay. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, I love reading. Okay, let's do a tag. So I've got. I might have enough for this one without having to gather up more stuff. I gotta put my green stuff back over here. Okay. I like to keep things pretty put away when I'm working, except like my glue stick that I got to keep handy, stuff like that. But my embellishments and stuff, I like to keep them put away and clean. Oh, tomorrow's housework day, and I'm gonna have <laughs> um, gonna have little corner crowd quarters corners all over the floor, but that's okay. I got two of these. Okay. I'm so happy my daughter has a boyfriend and and they they're just awesome together. They they're a really nice couple. Uh, you know, she, he's not someone that I'm. <laughs> I <laughs> wish she hadn't met. <laughs> Moms are picky about their dads too. 
They want to make sure their their daughter picks a nice boyfriend, and he's he's pretty good. We went shopping at our favorite thrift shop, and she found one thing and gave it to her dad to pay with our stuff and then she found two cute sundresses they were only a dollar a piece they were having a sale and she made her boyfriend pay for those for her she's got between her parents and her boyfriend she's got us wrapped around her finger I'm telling you she always has I'm glad. Oh, there's my. Glad I'm using up these arrows because really, what else would you do with an arrow? Okay, let's see if I can find something blue. I buy these on a sheet at um, Dollar Tree and they're assorted colors and I I cut things apart and put them in their own category that's kind of no that won't look good on there what else do I have stars are good I just don't have any well that's enough for this I just need something else. I don't have very much small stuff. I'll put a license plate on there. See, I like stuff at random angles, so these two line kind of lining up at the same angle was bothering me. Okay, that's that's done. I've been meaning to do, to make these for a few days now, <laughs> and I'm finally getting to. That's a piece of heavy cardstock right there. Oh, I just found this. I'm gonna put that here. Okay, so that's a that's a scrap of scrapbook paper, and I just made it into a tag. Okay, this was a border, well, you know, on a, something I bought. So I cut it down to fit my tag. Trim these corners. I've been kind of inspired lately to to play more in my room. I now that I, I was looking through my border bases and tag bases and I think I need more <laughs> I need to make some more and and Lord knows I have tons of stuff to make borders with border bases so I'm gonna make some more
I mix and match stickers and, and things that I've cut out that are not adhesive. I just mix and match stuff. A lot of people like everything all matchy matchy and, and that's that's fine. That's your style. We all have our own way of doing things. This I need to get a little bit of a glue dot on it. Oh, I do have some tiny glue dots. I'm not going to trust that one too. Stick. And I'm just going to grab this sticker right here. US 10. Put it on right there. I don't think like this is kind of 3D. That's thick. I think this one is done. I'm going to get another tag that I've thrown together. This one. I'm not sure where I found this car. Pinterest? Probably Pinterest. But that is a PT Cruiser. And it's blue. And I have a blue PT Cruiser. It's, uh, it's mine is a convertible. So I thought I gotta have that. So this will be a special page for me with my car. And that car of mine, I have been through so much lately with it. And I grabbed this plate earlier that's Iowa. And that's where I live. Iowa. Okay, so now I need to find something to add to it. Destination Paradise? Sure. I wish I had more tiny things to add on here, but I don't. Let's look in here. Now, normally I wouldn't put flowers on my car things. But because it's for my special car, there's a butterfly and a flower. That's going to be really cool. I think this is the coolest tag I ever made. I love this. I really love this. So my car. I've been through a lot with it this last year. It's it's. We have our family car that my husband drives, and we take it to the grocery store and and you know go to places together. <laughs> And then we have my our pickup truck, which we use for our mowing, and I that's my winter driver for the summer. I mean, you know, that's it's useful. And then I have my PT Cruiser, and that is my toy. It's not an imp important vehicle. It's my toy. And I've I bought it used. Um, it's a 2006. I bought it used to six years ago. Um, and for f four years it was great. Uh, but then it started having this limp mode problem. And that means um, sometimes when I shift into to, um, 
drive it'll go clunk <laughs> it doesn't really make a noise but I can feel it clunk into gear and I know it's in from all from experience that it's in limp mode and that means it's stuck in second gear if I shut it down and restart it it'll be fine most of the time well not most of the time it might start bad several times um, you never know when you start it if it's going to be in limp mode or working right so it's frustrating and I took it to Amco and they last year last spring and they charged me over twelve hundred dollars to put a new PCM that's the computer in it because um, they don't make them anymore you can't buy a new one <laughs> he had to find one on the internet and and order it and put it in and it worked good for a week and then it, it was doing limp mode again so that was frustrating I should have taken it back but I didn't so uh, I just kept restarting it and then as time went on it got worse and worse so this spring and I've, I've been kind of looking at stuff on the internet and um, what could be wrong with it what do you do about it and, and it's a complicated problem to fix because every vehicle it's there's so many different things that can that can cause it and you just don't know you got to try lots of different things so um, I had the idea why well, should just I can take out the PCM I found out I could take out take it out this show, there was a video how to do it take it out mail it into this company they will reprogram for program it to your VIN number um, and test it and, and it's guaranteed so two hundred and sixty dollars um, I got it back and installed it it didn't work it's better it doesn't do it as often now but it's still happening so I talked to my neighbor who's a car fiend and he recommended a, 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 a small business transmission company um, in town and so I took it there and I paid two hundred dollars for a complete electrical diagnosis diagnostics and he didn't really find anything so he said there's this procedure where you can bypass um, the fuse box which that that's often what causes it to kick into lip mode it's kind of a safety feature if there's a problem with your car it'll kick into limp mode so that you're kind of forced to get it fixed well fixing it is very difficult so he did that it was three hundred dollars so then that didn't work it's still doing it so um, one of my battery cab cable the thing that clamps onto the post it was corroded so I had him replace both of those I was hoping that would help but it didn't <laughs> so um, I was about ready to get rid of it so I thought well, I'm just gonna keep driving it because I park it all winter I was I drive it till October I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drive it and then maybe I'll get rid of it then I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do so then I've had a, a tire on there that keeps I keep having it keeps getting low so every couple of weeks we got to go put air in it so uh, finally I said I'm just gonna I'm gonna take it to the tire store and we know them there and they're really good and they they will fix the tire well no if there's a nail in the sidewall they can't fix that uh, so um, they said we got probably a used tire for 30 like 35 dollars well I'm not gonna spend any money on this car <laughs> it's not worth it I'm gonna get rid of it soon I'm not I'm not gonna spend the money so then I'm it's sitting in my garage tires flat 
then I'm thinking um, I saw this video online about doing a hard reset and what you do is you um, disconnect your battery and then you turn on your headlights now your headlights are not going to come on because your battery is disconnected but what that's going to do is drain the power out of your computer and um, so I got nothing to lose it doesn't cost anything so I tried that <laughs> and I know when it's in lint mode when I start it because of that clunk well um, I've gone out and started it like 15 times now in the past I've gone like a whole week and it starts fine every time and then it'll do it again so um, it's never gone like 15 times and I've, I've started like 15 or 16 times now so yay hopefully hopefully cross my fingers I really hope that it's fixed now um, we'll see <laughs> so now I gotta find a, a used tire the, the, they did not even have a used the right size tire for my car so I didn't get one there but uh so now I gotta find a used tire and I don't want to get a new tire because there's a lot of life left in all of my tires and I want to get um a new tire <laughs> new tires all at once all the way around not have one new tire up with three older tires so hopefully oh I really really hope it's finally fixed because it was just it's a convertible I and I it's a joy it's for my joy and it's it was really sapping my joy so hopefully it's really fixed this time so my plan is I'm going to start it a few more times and then I got to call a few different used tire places where I can get used tires and track down the tire that I need and that'll be that then I can get a new tire a used tire and when I need a new tire I can get new tires all the way around so hopefully I won't have to get rid of my car because I was really frustrated about it because I paid nine thousand dollars for this car um, and then uh, I actually had to replace the transmission a couple of years ago which has nothing to do with the limp mode because it went a few years fine um, I don't think it does and then I had to change some kind of a module once for a few hundred dollars I've got like fourteen hundred dollars in this car <laughs> and I only I don't drive it in the winter and I I'm a homebody I just mostly just drive it to work sometimes I'll drive it to the Hobby Lobby <laughs> but uh, I don't drive it much so I've, I've only driven 20,000 miles in the last six years so $14,000 for 20,000 miles uh, no I need to drive that car a lot more often because if I couldn't sell it with the limb mode that nobody can seem to fix so because it's not worth much like that so I'm glad I get to keep the car. I'm going to do one more of these and then this is going to be enough. So I've been just jabbering away about my car probably boring you to death. But hey it, it fits my subject here. I'm working on a car stuff. My first husband who passed away um, from cancer at age 38 in 1996 he was a car fiend we were married for 18 years and he had so many different cars he loved he liked to do body work on them and he never really finished any of his projects he'd see something oh I want to do that one instead you know he's 
never really finished anything. Yeah, it was an adventure being married to him. <laughs> so I learned my love of of cars from him. I had a 1965 um, Mercury Comet. It was it was a beautiful blue. He had restored it for me. Um, we put in new. Had the engine rebuilt, and he paint had he painted it, um, and we put new interior and headliner. All kind, we did a lot of work to it, and I drove it for 15 years, and it finally the engine died. But I I really like the classic cars. Well then, um, well actually I drove I had it for 15 years. I drove it for like eight years. And then I married my my second husband, and um, then I got pregnant and had well, I was I had a baby, and then um, one day the car just the engine went kaput, <laughs> so it just sat in the driveway for a few years, and and then then we bought uh, the house we're in now 18 years ago, and we did a lot of remodeling and stuff. And so all of our money was going into that. I was busy raising a child and kept meaning to get the car fixed eventually. But then one day we just, I was having a garage sale and my husband brought me out a piece of paper and magic marker. He says, here, put a sign on your car and sell it. And, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, I'll just do it because we're not going to fix it. Okay. So I sold it within a few hours. I sold it. And um, and I was like, okay, because actually I want a convertible. And it, it, it was 10 years before I finally got my convertible, but that's okay. And um, so, yeah, we've run, I've always liked classic cars. And the PC Cruiser is not actually a classic, but it's got classic styling. It's pretty cool. Okay. I think something 3D on here. Maybe a button. I got a brown button with my brown stuff. Most of my brown buttons are very thick. There, I got this. What about something black? I don't got a lot of black stuff. Let's see what I got. Flowers and buttons. Yeah. Okay. So this right here, I, I clean a clinic <laughs> at work. We have our own clinic with the nurse practitioners, and this is off of the top of a, a insulin or something. <laughs> so okay. That's all I'm going to do for this video. Um, I'm not going to say I'll see you soon because lately, lately, just don't know. But maybe we will. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.